A scope essentially defines the visibility or accessibility of various components. And uh, anything that is added to a scope is then only available within that scope. So a scope has some very well-defined boundaries. Anything that is inside the boundary is available within that boundary. Anything that is outside of that boundary is not available from within that boundary. More detail of that in a little while. With Java servlets, we've got three types of scope. Request, session, and application. The request scope typically is of a very short duration because it starts when the request from the client arrives at the server and it will end when the servlets have finished processing that request and therefore typically it will last for just a few milliseconds. Only servlets that are processing that request can access it and we gain access to the scope by using the request parameter that is passed in to the do get or the do post methods. So that parameter that we've been using up until now, the request parameter, is more than just some information about the, the request itself, but it is also embodying the request scope. The session scope is of longer duration because it starts when the first request from a given client arrives at the server and it will end in one of two ways. Either programmatically a servlet will kill the scope or that scope will time out after a certain period following the last request from that client. So a session scope exists for a given client. So we might have a web browser that sends in a request that first request will create the session scope. If that web browser sends in more requests within the timeout period, then that will keep the session scope alive and will reset the timeout counter. Let's say there's a request come in, it's request number 20 or whatever, and the user then leaves their workstation, goes and has a, a break of some sort, and does not come back to work on that client within the timeout period. That timeout period then expires, the session will automatically die because the server will be managing these scopes and when the timeout expires, the server will delete the session scope. When the user comes back to the workstation, the user of course has absolutely no concept at all of what's happened over on the server and therefore perhaps we'll just resume where they left off and sending, send in another request. That request will still be processed but it has now, because the session that this client was with has expired, that request will now essentially start a new session. Or maybe, the, depending on how the application is set up, maybe what will happen is a, a message will then come back to say your session has expired. And so maybe the user has to log in again or something like that. Servlets that are, that are processing any request from the same client within that session will be able to access the session scope and they get to it via the request. Request.getSession will provide a reference to that session scope object. The application scope is very long. Could be weeks and weeks and weeks in duration because when the internet application is deployed to the server, then the application scope begins. And if the application remains active on the server for weeks and weeks and weeks, so does the application scope. And what will terminate the application scope is the removal of the internet application from the server. Any servlet that belongs to the internet application that is processing any request from any session, from any client, that servlet will then be able to access the application scope. And access is obtained by calling from within the servlet this dot get servlet context. The, I mentioned earlier on about boundaries. Scopes have very well defined boundaries. The requests are isolated from each other. In other words, while processing a request, let's call it request A, a servlet is not able to, to access any other request scope. And of course, that makes sense because the parameter that arrives on the method call is the scope. Sessions are isolated from each other 
if a servlet is processing a request for session A from client A, then it will not be able to access the session scope for client B. And this is because we access the session via the request. And the, the servlet container will have already automatically sorted out which session the request belongs to and will have stored the reference to that session scope within the request scope. And therefore, when we call request.getSession, it will give us reference to the proper session. Now, there's only one application scope per application, and therefore, there is a very big boundary. It includes all sessions from all clients and all requests within that session. The thing that to bear in mind, of course, though, is this servlet that we might be looking at at any one time is able to gain access to the application scope for the application to which it belongs, but it cannot get access to any other application scope, and therefore applications are isolated from each other on the server. Here's an, an illustration of scope duration. We have time dragging on from left to right, and we're assuming that the application remains active for the entirety of that time. So the application scope exists throughout the time period. So client number one sends in a request, request 1.1, and the arrival of that request will start the session, session number one. A little bit later, client two sends in a request, request 2.1, that creates another session. Because the session for client one has not yet timed out, that session still exists. But of course, servlets that are processing this request are able to get hold of this session, but are prevented from gaining access to session one. A little bit later, client three sends in a request, request 3.1. That creates session three. Because there has been no request from client two, and it would seem that session two has got a very short timeout period, session two has now expired. Therefore, that session no longer exists. Also, and just a little bit after client 3 sent in a request, client 1 also sent in a request, request 1.2, and that has prolonged the life of session 1 because the timeout counter is reset. Request 2 comes in from client number 3, so session 3 continues, but now session 1 has timed out because there's been no further request from the first client. So request three comes in from client three. That has extended the session, but as is noted here, this particular request has now triggered the programmatic deletion of the third session. So this is an example of where the session has been programmatically terminated. In the meantime, a third request came in from client number one, but because session one has timed out, a new session has been created. Now all this session management is essentially taken care of by the servlet container. We have some control over it because as uh, it illustrates down here, a servlet that's processing a request can delete a session. But that's about as much control as we have programmatically over a session scope.